In today's tutorial, I'm going to teach how to calculate fatigue life in Abacus with the aid of FE Safe. This tutorial is not only useful for those who work with Abacus, but also for those who work with other finite element analysis programs such as ANSYS or NASTRAN. Welcome to another session of Abacus Tutorials by the Hyperlysum team. This video was made by Saman Hosseini and narrated by Kusha Puramedani. First, let's go over the contents real quick. In the beginning, I'm going to briefly explain the fatigue life theories, cyclic loading methods, and modeling process. After that, an introduction to the FE safe environment will be given and the fatigue life will be calculated for our model. In the end, Goodman's theory will be used to validate the results. Here you can see four of the most common theories on the left with the differences shown in the diagram on the right. The vertical and the horizontal axes of this diagram are alternating and mean stress respectively. The second degree Gerber's theory equation does not take the effect of negative compressive stress into account, which is considered one of the major drawbacks of this theory. The next theory would be Goodman's, in which the ultimate stress has been used in the calculations. The high accuracy of this theory has made it very useful in the industry. In the Soderbergh's theory, which is rather considered conservative compared to the others, yield stress has been included. However, this theory is rarely used. And finally, we have Merrow's theory, in which the true fracture stress has been used in its calculations. The area underneath each of these diagrams indicate the infinite life of the material. I remind again that we are only going to use Goodman's theory in this video to validate the results of our work. There are different types of loading that we normally deal with in these types of problems. This is the fully reversed loading. In this loading, the stress ratio, which is shown with the R symbol, is minus 1. Beside that, the mean stress equals 0 since maximum and minimum stress values are equal and opposite in direction, which will make their sum 0. In other words, it is a reversible load. The second type of loading we are going to discuss is the cyclic loading. In this loading type, oscillations occur around the mean stress axis. As you can observe, stress is always tensile and never equals zero. The third loading type is called pulsating loading, in which mean stress equals amplitude stress and stress ratio equals zero. We have used this type in our simulation. It's necessary to mention that in the industry, the loading time history could become complicated at different times and in real working conditions. In which case, sinusoidal loadings are not helpful for our simulations, so it's of importance that time histories like the power transmission system, which is being displayed on the screen right now, be included in the software. In order to simplify such complex loadings, we can use techniques like rain flow cycle counting. This loading standard is not a segment of this tutorial and it was only mentioned so you could get familiar with the procedure of complex loadings. Now let's get to the model. You can observe the geometry of our model here. The length, outer diameter and thickness of the specimen are 220, 26.7 and 5.56 mm respectively. The simulation of this specimen has been already done in Abacus software and the fatigue test was conducted by a machine like the one shown in the picture. To simulate the fatigue test using software, First, the initial tensile loading of the specimen must be modeled in Abacus, and then the loading will be transferred and repeated up to the fracture point in FE Safe. Now it's time to get familiar with FE Safe and its environment. In the subgroup column, we can choose which elements to study in our analysis. In the surface finish column, the amount of machining or polishing on the specimen is determined. In the material database section, the desired material for the analysis can be selected. In case we want to use a specific kind of material that is not present in the materials database, we can easily define new materials in the software. In the next column, the algorithm we are planning to use will be assigned to the specimen. As for the applied load to the specimen, under the loaded data files panel, the loading type can be employed. In the current FE models panel, the generated stress in the specimen can be chosen. By selecting these two, we can assign a loading to our analysis. Finally, by clicking on the Analyze button, the operation of the fatigue life estimation will take place. In addition to FSAFE, there are other pieces of software in terms of fatigue analysis, such as MSC or FEMFAT. 
Each of these software have its own strengths and weaknesses and everybody can use one of these softwares with respect to their project. In this diagram, you can observe the general procedure of analysis in fatigue life estimation software. At first, compute the stress and strain results from finite element analysis software such as Abacus, ANSYS or NASRAN are used in fatigue life estimation software. Afterward, the time history of cyclic loading and mechanical properties concerning the fatigue life like Basquin or coffin manson parameters are defined in the fatigue life estimation software. Finally, fatigue life is calculated in the software by using cyclic loading on computed stresses and strains in nodes and elements. Now I go to Abacus software to perform the narrated sequence. Here you are observing the three-dimensional model of the specimen. Since the purpose of this tutorial is the estimation of fatigue life and not the modeling of the specimen itself, I'm gonna briefly explain the different aspects of the specimen in Abacus. First, the length and thickness of the specimen are 220 and 2 mm respectively. By changing the module to property, we can determine the features of our desired material, which here is aluminium 7075T6. The elastic and plastic features, including yield stress, plastic strain, Young's modulus, and Poisson's ratio for aluminium 7075 should be equal to the amounts being displayed on the screen. Next comes the load module. Here you can find the boundary condition manager. By clicking on this button, you can observe that a 1mm displacement as a load has been applied to the specimen. Now if you change the module to mesh, the specimen's meshing will be shown. And if you go to the job module and click on the job manager button and select results, the simulation's result will be displayed. Here you can see that the maximum stress in the specimen is equal to 529.7 MPa. Now that we have finished with the simulation of the specimen in Abacus, we can move to FESAFE. Open the software and create a new project. At first, I must open the ODB file. In the Files tab, select Open Finite Element Model under the FE8 Solutions and open the file. Now change the Strains type to PE or Plastic and change the Stress Unit and Distance Unit to Megapascals and Millimeters respectively. When you hit the OK button, the software asks you whether you want to edit the group list. If you click on Yes, it will show you the group lists. Here the specimen which has been simulated earlier in Abacus is chosen for analysis and that's what we want, so I select OK. Next, double click on subgroup in the groups parameter and change the default subgroup selection from surface to whole group. Leave the surface finish at 1 and select the material from the material database. To do so, first find and select aluminium 7075T6 from the list. Observe that its features are the same as what we defined in Abacus earlier. Then double click on the material column and click on yes. In the algorithm section, select an algorithm to be used and find Goodman's algorithm under the normal stress in the list. Now move to the loading settings tab. First make sure that there isn't any previous or default loading by selecting the clear all command. Then choose the desired loading from the current FE model section. As you can see, all increments, stresses and strains have been listed here, but we are going to choose the last increment as it is the end of our process. To apply a stress in the form of pulsating loading, we need to define a loading. Go to the Generation tab and select Signal Generation. Then define a sign loading with a 1Hz frequency and select OK. If you open the loadings plot we have just generated, you can observe that it's a fully reversed loading and we still need to change it into a pulsating loading by offsetting it. In the amplitude tab, select scale and offset from the menu. Then define an offset according to the settings shown in the picture. Now you can see our tensile pulsating loading has been added to the loaded data files panel. Finally, after selecting both pulsating loading and stress, we create our new load by clicking on the Add button and selecting the first option. All the adjustments that are successfully carried out can be seen in the message log in the bottom right corner of the screen. Everything will be listed in this panel. Now it's time to start the analysis. Calculated fatigue life for our specimen is 8959.8. .8. Now I want to open the obtain ODB file in Abacus. Go to the directory to which the output file has been exported and open it. You can find that under the output file in the main menu. Now you observe the obtain fatigue life analysis from FSAFE with a logarithmic scale in Abacus. In order to have the normal number of cycles, type 10 to the power of 3.953 in the script section. 
the result is 8974.2, which is very close to the value we acquired earlier in FSA for fatigue life. In order to calculate fatigue life through Goodman's equation, we can use this script in Abacus. For this purpose, I will type the Goodman's equation so that we could calculate the fatigue life here. First, we type in the constants along with their respective amount. Here, each of the amplitude, mean and ultimate stresses are respectively represented with SA, SM and SU. The letter B represents fatigue stress exponent and SRI1 is known as extent of the first slope line to the vertical axis of SM curve. For more information, please visit the link in the description. The equations for endurance limit represented by SE and fatigue life represented by NF must also be included. Finally, type in the print command for fatigue life and hit enter. As you can see, the fatigue life obtained from Goodman's theory is equal to 8756.4, which is about 200 cycles less than 8974.2 obtained using FE-safe software. That would be all for today. I hope you've enjoyed our sessions and until the next one, have a good day. This video was made by Salman Hosseini. To find his contact information and his updated resume, please visit our website, hyperlyceum.com. Salman is an expert in Abacus, Dreamatics, Mimics, SolidWorks, Ketia, and a few other engineering software. To plan online sessions and discuss industrial and academic projects, please use the provided email under Salman's contacts. The cost of the projects vary depending on the complexity of the work and can be discussed in advance. We look forward to working with you.